You may have heard of the benefits of fasting, especially for weight loss and blood glucose balance. A fast is a long period where you choose not to eat to stimulate the organs in your body. There are many ways to fast. You can do it every day or do it occasionally, once or twice a week. And since you're watching this, you're probably interested in trying out fasting. However, there are some things you need to know before attempting your first fast. First of all, not all methods of fasting work for everyone, especially if you have diabetes. In fact, there's a very thin line between beneficial and harmful when it comes to fasting with diabetes. But if you do it right, there's a world of benefits to be had from fasting. That's why in this video, you'll discover the five worst fasting mistakes that you need to avoid, three tips to fast safely, which fasting methods work for diabetics and which ones don't, and how to enjoy all the benefits of fasting with none of the risks. But before we continue, please take a quick second to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We want to make sure that you get the latest info so you can live a long and healthy life. And watch until the end to find out how to get two free gifts from us. And now let's dive into the five worst fasting mistakes to avoid. Starting with number five, breaking a fast with a feast. Whether you choose to do an intermittent fast two days a week or a 16 hour fast daily, breaking it with an excessive amount of food can be detrimental to your goals and your health. A fast has two main purposes, to reduce your calories and increase weight loss and to stimulate your organs for better detoxification and overall function. However, when you jump into a big meal right after a fast, you increase your calorie count and overwork your digestive system. Doing this will not only make you feel bloated and tired, but you can also develop unhealthy habits like binge eating. Psychiatrists note that fasting creates a common psychological effect that can lead to binge eating. When you're fasting, you're not eating food that restricts your calorie intake, and sometimes we might unconsciously perceive fasting as deprivation. This can force us to binge. People with type 2 diabetes commonly experience binge eating. In fact, a German study involving 300 patients with type 2 diabetes noted that 9% of patients experienced an eating disorder, with 6.5% of disorders being binge eating. When it comes to diabetes, binge eating can trigger a significant spike in your blood glucose, and this makes it extremely difficult to maintain healthy habits. So how can you avoid binge eating when fasting? Experts suggest resuming a regular and proportioned diet is key to break your fast in a healthy and non-triggering way. Be mindful of your food consumption, observe how your body responds to the fast, and adjust your habits accordingly. But feasting is only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to fasting mistakes. The next one you need to watch out for is number four, not maintaining a healthy diet. While fasting can prompt you to overeat, it can also push you to eat the wrong foods. When you start to implement a fast into your diet, it can be challenging for the body to adjust. You might be more thirsty or more tired, and you might also crave more carbohydrate-rich foods. Foods that are high in carbs are used by our body to generate energy. The carb-rich food group includes fibers like oats, quinoa, or legumes, starch like bread and pasta, and sugars, including any processed food. When consumed in a controlled amount, carbohydrates are efficiently processed by our body. But in large amounts, and for those with diabetes, carbohydrates can break down into glucose or fat. This can spike blood glucose levels and have long-term negative effects on diabetes. So while you may be tempted to eat more carbohydrates to compensate for your fast, be mindful. 
doctors advise that people with diabetes should aim to only eat 50% of their calorie count from carbs. This includes prioritizing high fiber carbs with a low glycemic index, even during a fast. Number three, being inactive. Being inactive is one of the common mistakes people make during their fast. It is easy to assume that because you're not eating, you need to conserve your energy. But we all know what happens when we rest on our couch all day. We feel even more tired. Exercising when fasting brings a lot of benefits. It can boost your body's fat burning process and stimulate blood circulation. Yet when you have diabetes, being physically active is tricky and adding a fast to your routine can be challenging. While a regular exercise routine requires that you monitor your blood sugar levels closely, the wrong exercise can push your muscles to use more glucose, resulting in hypoglycemia. On top of that, fasting can add an extra challenge. The lack of calories you get from fasting can quickly trigger your blood glucose to become unbalanced. So it might seem that not doing any physical activity while fasting is the safest option for diabetics, but that's just not the case. Research conducted by Harvard University confirmed that exercise is beneficial for people with diabetes. They observed that low and moderate intensity exercises can boost insulin sensitivity and improve overall blood glucose levels. This includes different types of exercise, such as yoga and aerobics, walking and resistance training. Focusing on low intensity exercise during a fast can support the body to use body fat for fuel instead of glucose. So while people with diabetes fear a spike in blood glucose during exercise, embracing low intensity activities can be a safer approach to exercising while fasting. But fasting with exercise means you need to avoid making this next mistake. But before we continue, it's time to reveal your two free gifts. Discover an entire world of diabetes fighting foods with our new book, 10 Incredible Foods That Reduce Blood Sugar. Plus, you'll discover the real reasons why type 2 diabetes, cancer, heart illness, dementia, and obesity are increasing at a terrifying rate. And find out what really works when it comes to preventing these illnesses by watching our free one-hour documentary, The Scary Truth About Sugar. Both gifts are free and waiting for you. Simply click the link in the description below to grab both. Now let's move on to the next fasting mistake, which is number two, not drinking enough. Up until now, you might have thought that fasting meant restricting both your food and liquid intake. It's common to see people avoid drinking anything, such as coffee, tea, and even water when on a fast. This is known as dry fasting. It is often practiced for religious and spiritual purposes, but it is not recommended for those with diabetes. Water and overall hydration are essential to keep the body cells functioning. And for diabetics, it's vital to keep blood glucose levels balanced. Studies have shown that dry fasting can foster electrolyte imbalance and dehydration. Dehydration can be detrimental for diabetics. In fact, having diabetes makes you more prone to dehydration. So adding a dry fast on top of that is generally not a good idea. And when you're dehydrated, there's not enough fluid moving through the body. And this triggers glucose to heavily build up in the bloodstream, causing hyperglycemia. A 2001 clinical trial looked at the connection between fasting, dehydration, and hyperglycemia. 25 patients with type 1 diabetes fasted with hydration for 5 hours and then fasted without hydration for 32 hours. As a result, researchers concluded that regular fasting can decrease plasma glucose in the blood. Alternatively, the combination of fasting and dehydration increased it. So if you want to try fasting as a diabetic, it's best to avoid the dry fasting method and keep yourself hydrated. It's also essential to check with your doctor first to avoid any mistakes. Number one, not monitoring blood glucose levels. 
As a diabetic, you know the importance of monitoring your blood glucose. In fact, you're probably checking your blood glucose levels first thing in the morning after you've fasted overnight. So when you decide to embark on your new fasting journey and space out your meals, it is even more important to monitor your blood glucose levels. Not doing so can impact the rest of your routine, including the efficacy of the medicine you take. Experts note that not monitoring the impact of a fast can lead to serious consequences. For those with type 1 diabetes, fasting and insulin medicine don't always go hand in hand. A wrong dosage and the lack of calories can cause hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia. So should you talk to your doctor about fasting and adjusting the dosage of your medicine? The answer is a resounding yes. But it is also important to closely monitor your blood glucose more than you're used to. In fact, experts advise that diabetics should check their blood glucose levels every two to four hours when fasting. Checking your blood glucose levels can tell you how your body is responding to the fast. With this valuable information, you can make the correct adjustments. Monitoring your blood glucose closely will ensure that your levels stay balanced. It will also help you really experience the benefits of fasting. So now that you know what not to do when fasting with diabetes, you might be wondering if fasting is even worth it at all. Well, don't be discouraged because there are plenty of benefits of fasting with diabetes. Various studies have observed the impact of fasting for people with type 2 diabetes. And overall, they noted that fasting can improve insulin sensitivity, lower blood pressure, promote weight loss, and in 50% of the cases, reduce the need for diabetes medication. But as you might understand by now, People with diabetes need to fast in specific ways to gain those benefits without damaging their blood glucose. So here are our top three tips to help you get started. Fasting tip number three, break your fast slowly and steadily. Breaking your fast slowly and steadily means that you have to be mindful of your food intake. Having a large, carb-heavy meal is definitely not recommended. This approach can spike your blood glucose level, undo the benefits of the fast, and lead to more diabetes complications. On the other hand, a study conducted by the University of Alabama noted that if you break a fast mindfully, you're more likely to balance your blood glucose and improve your insulin sensitivity. They observed the impact of fasting and diet on a group of men with pre-diabetes. After five weeks, it was clear that breaking a fast with a controlled diet improved insulin sensitivity. But as a diabetic, you know that your blood glucose levels will often rise after a meal. So how can you really be mindful? Choosing foods with a low glycemic index will help keep the blood glucose balanced, especially after a fast. To break a fast slowly and steadily, consider the following. Enjoying a medium-sized meal to keep you full. Thoroughly chewing your food to break it down as much as possible. Prioritizing whole food with protein, fibers, and fat, and hydrating in between meals. Fasting tip number two, pick the right fasting method. There are plenty of fasting methods available, but not all of them might work for you. While talking to your doctors is vital before you start your fasting journey, there are two methods to consider that you might want to look into. The 16 to 8 intermittent fasting method and the 5 to 2 intermittent fasting method. The 16 to 8 method involves eating meals during an 8 hour window and then fasting for a 16 hour window. The fasting window can seem large, but it includes the fasts you naturally do overnight. Some people have eating windows from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. or 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. This type of fast has shown to be efficient in diabetes prevention and blood glucose regulation. However, fasting for 16 hours might be too much for someone with diabetes. 
Experts often recommend adjusting the fasting window to 14 or 12 hours to prevent blood glucose rise and drop. Alternatively, the 5 to 2 method involves fasting for two days a week by eating less than 500 calories per day. This approach might feel less restrictive as you are allowed to eat a regular diet five days a week. It has also shown great results in supporting weight loss and insulin sensitivity. However, if you're using medications, restricting calories even for just two days a week can increase the risk of hypoglycemia. So which method should you choose? Both have their benefits and their drawbacks. So to find the right fasting method for you, it's essential to check with your doctor. And along with that, you should consider our number one tip. Fasting tip number one, listen to your body. It's important to monitor your blood glucose during a fast regularly, but it's also essential to observe the cues given by your body. Throughout your fasting journey, you want to keep an eye out for things like fatigue, hunger, mood swings, and headaches. Those signs are an indication that your blood glucose levels might be changing, that you are experiencing dehydration, or you need to eat. Noticing your symptoms will help you and your doctor understand how your body responds to the fast. It will also give you the opportunity to adjust your fast for optimal health. Remember that fasting with diabetes is a journey, and it will require many adjustments. But once you find your balance, you will be able to experience the many benefits of fasting like better insulin sensitivity and more controlled levels of blood glucose. So don't be afraid to talk to your doctor about fasting. Have you tried fasting before? Share your experience in the comments below. Before you leave, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Most of all, don't forget to grab your two free gifts. Just click the link in the description below. Thanks for watching and have a diabetes fighting day.